Tom Darcy, are you about? Oh, there you are, sir. Sorry I didn't see you there. <laughs> Going to have a word from Tom. On the 21st of January this year, Justice Elizabeth Dunn directed me to go to Angarda Shia Kona. I wonder if the Irish media would actually record this for the first time. I was directed to go to Angarda Shia Kona because I produced in a court of Irish law that the banks criminally renewed their banking license. And on the 14th of February this year, after four failed attempts, I managed to get the guards to take in my statement. So that became the first person in the Irish state of this country and the first person in 27 European states to initiate a criminal investigation by Angarda Siakana against an Irish bank. I was very quickly, I realized that we don't live in a very free society and we don't live in a democracy. So I put it on Facebook and my vintage is not accustomed to Facebook and over 1,100 people followed me. And Detective Sergeant John Finucane of the Fraud Squad in Harcourt Square initiated a mass criminal investigation against the Irish banks of this country. Now this is probably the first time you've heard about it. Why? Because our media will not report it. Why? Because they want a public inquiry just like the Stardust, just like the OMA bombings, just like the McCracken Tribunal. So any information brought out is tainted and no criminal action or prosecutions can dare take place. I further went and identified the fact that our Irish banks were in fact insolvent. On the 15th of February 2008, I produced irrefutable evidence, and let get the media if they're here, to Valerie Cox of RTE, I take it at you, and to Linda Murphy from TV3, Joe Duffy, Pat Kenny, Gay Byrne. Irrefutable evidence that our banks signed a contract with the central bank selling all our assets, all our securities, all our indemnities. Not one mentioned by the Irish media. I have listened for the last 12 months I have listened to the hypocrisy that has been given in Irish airwaves and not one mention from any of our so-called economists. I'll come back to something shortly, but I just want to read out something that I've been waiting for a year to read out. And I can guarantee you, other than Facebook, this is not going to be published. Like everyone here today, I broke no laws, committed no crimes acted honestly and believed and trusted in our regulated financial institutions. Not for one second did I think that they were corrupt, that they were criminals, that they were illegally trading, that they were insolvent. No. I, like you all, trusted our financial institutions. I trusted our legal system. That trust, that naivety, that gullibility has cost my family and I everything. But it's not just about me. It's about everyone here and across this country. Our aged, who after supporting this country all their lives, have to choose between food and heat. Our disabled, who are denied their basic rights, their mobility, taken away. By this nation's complacency, we have allowed corrupt criminal bankers and complicit politicians to evade accountability, to evade punishment. Each and every one of them broke the laws of this country and are guilty of the oppression of this nation's people. The Republic of Ireland, a democratic society of free people. How free are we? What type of life do we have? What future can we hope for? When our freedom has been removed from us, when our dignity is stripped away, as we all fall victim to criminal bankers who hold no conscience, who torture innocent men and women that ends in their innocence taking their own lives. Two weeks ago, a 31-year-old lady took her life. No reports in Irish newspapers, nothing. 
because she was getting consistent notification from banks. An innocent life taken away. Yet, I appeal to the Supreme Court of Ireland, the highest court in the country. I informed three High Court, Supreme Court judges that Angarda Shia Kona had established an investigation. By Irish law, by normal law, every eviction in Ireland should have been suspended. It wasn't. Again, the Irish media fall to the fact that they don't report. What does it say about our society? The criminal bankers have destroyed and desecrated the most sacred and precious aspect and piece of this country, our families. In 2013, Irish children go to school hungry. Two and a half thousand people a week depend on food parcels. 181,000 people face the possibility of eviction. I listened here earlier in relation to the personal insolvency petitioners. Five weeks ago, I lodged an appeal against the insolvency bill. Um, it will be coming up on the 28th of October. And basically, what the insolvency bill is going to do, sorry, the, the land and conveyancing bill, it works in tandem with the insolvency bill. It's going to generate for every personal, private, and petitioner 5,631 euros plus VAT. You multiply that by 181,000 and you will see the reason why these so-called people want to represent our, our, sadly, our deprived and impoverished people. We have the likes of Grant Thornton who are generating millions in the private insolvency petitioner's ID, yet there hasn't been one notification from anybody particularly across the road, or our public representatives to inform everybody that it is in fact yourself who will pay for it. Because as soon as the private petitioner puts in your proposal, he gets paid by the bank. Then the bank in turn puts that back on your mortgage, and you get held for 20 years, not 6 years, not 12 years, but 20 years. Because if you sell your property within 20 years, the bank gets everything. All the debt. Again, coming back to the fact of information not being reported in the Irish media. Everyone here today, everyone passing, everyone listening, will be affected in the next coming weeks, months, years, by a family met friend, a loved one, because of another life destroyed. And what will we do then? This nation's people's dignity has been replaced by shame. Their respect turned into self-loathing, our pride to humiliation. There is no pride when you witness your flesh and blood being knocked to the ground and unconscious, and then people walking on them in the name of good banking. That happened to me. I stood and watched the servants of this country on Garda Shia Khanna protect me, and I watched the sheriff walk in and knock my son to the ground, knocked him unconscious. I videotaped it. Then the sheriff, John Fitzpatrick, walked on my son's still body. Walked across him, and members of Angarda Shia close enough to that man there, seen nothing. They never do. One more, Harrington. Have you always wanted him? They could see you. I ask everyone. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Hang on. Hello. Yeah. I ask everyone here to stop. Please stop for one minute. What we are allowing to be perpetrated against our families, our children, is more cuts, more taxes, more increases, more hardship, more misery, more tears, and more loss. The real figures, and that's why I'm here today, is in relation to suicide. The real figures they don't want published. Accidental debt. People take rat pies and accidentally. Women cut their own wrists and let the blood flow from them. And these people across there and our media don't want to report it. Because Irish people don't commit suicide. We have, after all, honest politicians. And honourable bankers. 
I say no more. No more lies, no more false promises, no more cover-up by criminal bankers and corrupt civil servants. The blood of this nation's people is dripping from the hands of the people. Who are laughing at your misery, laughing at our suffering, laughing at this nation's pain. We all broke no laws. We committed no crimes. Why should we, this nation, be punished? Why should one more tormented soul have to take their own life? Why has our media ignored the real truth? Why have they not reported the hundreds of citizens who initiated a mass criminal investigation by Angada Shirkana? I ask you just one question. Everything I've stated is the truth. I initiated a criminal investigation by Angara Shirkana. I established um, the stop the land and conveyancing bill so no more people will actually be conned because that's exactly what it is. They want to introduce a law called the land and conveyancing bill of 1930, 2013 Will, which will retrospectively address laws to enable the banks to evict people. Not one member of the Irish government, not one public figure, has come out to inform you what they're actually doing. And that's what the bill is all about. They want to evict because they want to get paid. Another thing, and I'll take this opportunity, it wasn't something I wanted to get into, but it's probably my only shot, shot here. Since 2003, and I spent literally 17 weeks, going in and out of the company's registration office and examining the financial records of every bank in Ireland. And basically what I can prove, and I proved it to RTE and TV3 and every other member of the Irish media, including the newspapers, and sent them in irrefutable evidence, but our banks were in fact, and the greatest respect to people have spoken, to me, spoken before me, once they, you walked in and borrowed, the banks went off and done with something what that's called securitize your loan. What securitize means is that they sell on your loan. And if you all look in your mortgage, you'll see a little thing called securitization. And when they sell the loan, they sell the legal and equitable rights to that loan. So you've all been conned, every last one of you. And the banks and the politicians are laughing their socks off because I stood in a court of law and I said to Judge, Judge Dunn, sorry, Judge uh, Sean Ryan, last July, that the plaintiff, who was the AIB against my case, had no legal standing in a court of law because they sold that legal right. I was told to appeal to the Supreme Court. I said to the judge, the banks don't have a banking license. They haven't had one in the last six years. You're a judge. If I was driving a car and I had no driving license and no insurance, I'd end up in prison. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yet you endorse people being evicted, you endorse the criminality of the banking institutions, and you say absolutely nothing. Now again, with the greatest respect to the Garda Shia but they too, ironically, are now contacting me seeking advice. There is thousands of them too in the same position, but sadly, they can't do anything about it. They can't even go to a personal insolvency petitioner. What we need to do is to address the illegality of what's being perpetrated in this nation. And there is serious illegality. I have proven, and anybody that needs confirmation, I'll CC every one of you. I have proven they were operating without a banking license. Criminal act, every one of them complicit. Two, they sold every asset on the 15th of February 2008. They were still lending. For two years after that, they were still lending. The central bank owns every Irish bank and not a word told, not a word printed, not a word repeated. Why is that? This is after all democracy, Irish democracy. Our politicians know about it. Everybody knows about it bar one people the Irish people. So I'll leave you with one, one question. 
if we consider that they've broken the laws, and the laws are there after all for us to adhere to, um, they have sold the assets, they've sold your loan, why have we got Irish courts bringing people to court to evict them, to close down businesses, when they've already been paid, not once when they securitized the loan, not twice when they were bailed out, but three times for the same loan. And we all think that's okay. I'll ask you just one thing. The next person who takes their life, the next time you hear or you stand like I have over... Hello? Pierre. Hello? Yeah. Sorry, it's overheating the bit, it's overheating. I apologize. No, it's not to you. When you stand over a grave, and you know that person took their life because of financial trauma, detriment, pressure. Age doesn't matter. Religion doesn't matter. Coral doesn't matter. Ethnic communities doesn't matter. All these people standing beside me are going to be touched by that. And when you realize standing there that this person, life was so bad, so horrific, so unimaginable that they had to take their own life and they leave families and friends and loved ones behind who will question for the rest of their life. What did I do? Why didn't I do something? Why didn't I ask? And I'll ask every one of you here today if anybody that you feel in any way isn't depressed or shows signs, please sit down, have a co coffee with them and get them the proper services. Thank you very much. Marcus Howard, test one, two, three.